It's time for the next elemental, Navi. Iceman. He deals aqua damage to the foe and has quite a nice spread out area of effect. Not only that, but he's incredibly adorable too. Once summoned, Iceman attacks every single panel in front of him. If he strikes from the back column, he can even attack enemies that have come over onto your side of the field. Iceman also is not particularly deterred by holes. While he can't strike from them, he can attack beyond them. It just kind of skips over any panels that aren't actually there. Once more though, Iceman does seem to have the problem of being unable to hit stage objects. This seems to hold true for pretty much all Navi summons, so... Until something comes along that proves me wrong, I think we can just go with that assumption. And now it's time for Color Man. This guy's very odd. He uses two different attacks and two different elements. Pretty unique, that. No matter where you summon him from, Color Man always appears on your back column. He sends a fire tower through the upper row and an aqua tower through the bottom row. The thing is, unlike the actual tower chips, you cannot control them in any way. You can't make them go up or down at all. That being said, of course there are some times when Color Man is just doomed to spectacular failure. He's a sad clown. Despite these weaknesses, Color Man doesn't care at all about holes. He can be summoned from them, attack on them. You go, Psycho Clown. Now we can move on to an element beyond just heat and aqua. It's time to talk about Alec Man. He likes to fry the enemy with Alec attacks and makes sure everybody gets a taste. Once summoned into battle, Alec Man is pretty straightforward. He just rains lightning down on every single enemy. Zap! Yeah, there's no escaping that. It is worth noting that Alec Man can attack enemies on holes, and even enemies that are on your side of the field. Despite his ability to hit all enemies on screen, there is one strange anomaly to Alec Man. That is, he completely ignores Magic Man's summoned viruses. That is very strange. This anomaly holds true with the life virus and his scuttle viruses also, so it's still weird, but at least it's consistent. Next up we have Bomb Man. Despite not being Heat Element himself, his attack certainly is. I'd actually never used this one until these demos, so let's give it a look. Bomb Man's range of attack changes depending on where you summon him. Once called in, he kicks one of his bombs three panels forward, and it detonates in a cross-shaped blast. He can even land his bombs on occupied panels and they'll still go off. The blast goes the entire range of the enemy field, but of course that means he can't attack anything that appears on your side. Bomb Man does have one weakness, though. His bomb needs a solid panel to land on. Oh, bugger. Now, so long as it does have a solid panel it can land on, the bomb will still go off. But note that the explosion will not extend over missing panels. Now, it's on to Magic Man. His attack might seem straightforward at first, but he's got a special trick up his sleeves. Once summoned, Magic Man sends a ball of magic fire down the row you called him from. It does damage to the first thing it hits. Please note that it does not pierce enemies. It damages the first thing that it strikes and that's it. Pretty simple, really. Straightforward as that might seem, Magic Man does have a hidden ability. You can't always count on it, but sometimes when he hits an enemy with magic fire, they display that sigil. If that occurs, it's an instant delete, no matter how much health the enemy has left. 
I'm fairly certain it never happens against bosses, though. There are, however, some things that can get away from the instant delete effect, such as the Gaia viruses in their iron body. There's the sigil, but it still only takes one point of damage. So now for the last element that hasn't had a Navi yet, we move on to Woodman. He's a big hefty fellow with a straightforward attack. Though, in testing, something strange did come up. Once called into battle, it's lumber from the heavens! Woodman attacks by skewering the enemy with wood towers. At first glance, it kind of seems like just a wood element version of Iceman, but there is a key difference. He only attacks the enemy field. The only problem is, since he only attacks the enemy field, he can't attack anything that comes over to your side. Uh, Woodman, you missed a spot. Of course, holes do present a problem for Woodman, as he can only strike panels that actually exist. Wait a minute. Why did it make the sound of three strikes when there were only two columns of wood towers that appeared? Wait a minute. Okay, I have to try this. <laughs> Invisible wood towers? Seriously? <laughs> Nice! Oh, good one, Capcom, good one! <laughs> Next up is Skullman. It is rather notable that in his chip there, he's quite clearly using the Burn Stalker! And yet, that's not what he does when you use the chip. He does certainly bring the pain, though. Once summoned, Skullman is extremely straightforward. Skull! Yes, he basically just drops his giant head right on the enemy. It has no range of effect, it only damages the panel that it lands on, but it is rather heavy damage. When given a choice of multiple targets, Skullman will always go after the one with the most hit points, so goodbye, B-Tank. So long as there's one target out there with more health than another, that's the one that's going to catch a skull. This, of course, is affected by the anomaly that he cannot target Magic Man's viruses. However, unlike a Lek Man, since this time you're only gonna hit one thing, I suppose you really do want to do the damage to the thing summoning the viruses in the first place. One final note about Skullman. Neither proximity nor holes will deter him. Oh yes, you will be sculled, even if you're on my side and on a hole. <laughs> <laughs>